Any other questions? Congratulations, Professor Nakamura. Yeah. Um, I have two questions. Uh, first of all, uh, who do you want to thank the most? Um, I know you have a lot, but who yeah. do you want to thank the most? That's my first question. My second question is about the culture in Japan. Um, lots of professors, um, tend, like you, tend to go abroad, especially to America, uh -huh. to, pers uh, to pursue uh -huh. their uh, researches. Do you think that is a major problem in Japan um, with all the, the uh, knowledge going yeah. out to foreign countries um, besides Japan. Thank yes. you. So, so first question, who, who I, I want to thank, you know, lot in the, oh, first person is the uh, chairman of Nichia Chemical Industry. Uh, name is uh, Nobu Oga Oretero. Because uh, when, I, when I asked him to, I want to start bread, he said, okay, just five seconds, no? And he invested me five minutes. He, the right guy, you know, he's the best, one of the best venture capitalists, the right guy, you know? Without him, I couldn't do Blu-ray Delisa, so I'd like to thank uh, 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 Nobu Ogawa. Also, uh, second person is uh, uh, Chancellor Hendi Yang. After joining uh, UCSB, also he hired me, no? And after joining UCSB, every time, every year, he said, oh, you should get a Nobel Prize, Nobel Prize. I, I will support the Nobel Prize, <laughs> you know? So he, he has been a big supporter for me, so, so I'd like to thank uh, you know, to, to, to people. And uh, also, I think the uh, problem is that in Japan, you know, I think uh, after coming to the United States, most big difference between the United States and Japan is that uh, United States has a lot of freedom for researchers, a lot of freedom. Uh, everybody, everybody has a chance to, to dream an uh, American dream, no? Everybody has a chance if you work very hard, no? But in Japan, not everybody has a chance to, to dream an uh, American dream because uh, in Japan, there's still a lot of discrimination, uh, sexual harassment, also age discrimination, health discrimination. Still not equal and not uh, real, uh, there are no real freedom in the United States. I don't know which one is good, but, uh, but uh, here, you know, you can enjoy a lot of freedom. You can do anything here, <laughs> but uh, a lot of responsibility. <laughs> That's a big difference, you know, but you have to work very hard here, but uh, you can enjoy freedom, but uh, in Japan, only, you know, if you have a big company, only you can become a salary man. I have to become a salary man. You know, I don't know, you, you, salary man is a <laughs> average a salary man, you know? <laughs> Even if at the company, you the big thing, always average, average, average salary man. Only if you're the good investor, like in my case, just blue LED, I could invent a blue LED at the company, only they gave me the bonus, you know? Bonus is uh, like uh, 5,000 yesterday, that one year, that's it. But here, you know, you can immediately start a start company. And uh, you can do whatever you like, you know, here. That, that's a big difference. Any other questions? How do you plan to develop your research next? Mm, pardon? Um, what do you expect your next Nobel Prize to be in? <laughs> <laughs> no. Nah, I'm too young, you're too young. And, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, no, I'm too young, no, no, no. <laughs> but, uh, but I thought also another thank you is, you know, I t this morning I, I through ma Japanese mathematics, I talked with uh, uh, Leo Esaki, he's also a Nobel laureate, and uh, all I said uh, thank you so, I t told Leo Esaki, thank you so much, because without your invention of super lattice, we cannot make blue LED uh, laser dial, any blue, all kind of LED laser I use uh, super lattice. Also, I, also at the same time, I thank you to the, Professor uh, uh, Hab Kroma, he's also a Nobel laureate. He, his invention of a uh, heterostructure, without his invention of heterostructure, we cannot make LED laser, you know? So, so all of LED laser is the uh, invention of a heterostructure by Hab Kroma, and also the Leo is like the super uh, something we call quantum wear. Without, uh, you know, both, uh, you know, in this field, uh, Professor Hab Kroma and Professor Leo is like invention is great for us. All of LED is a user header. Also, it is a power device, you know, yeah, header Yeah, it's great. Thanks. Anything else? Any other questions? No? Oh. Yeah. 
Uh, I'm, uh, uh, I'm Nakaga from Kyodo News. Uh, after your legal dispute with Nichia Chemical Industries, it is said that the environment for our Japanese researchers or inventors has changed. So it is said that uh, they, the Japanese courts tend to uh, get to tend, uh, admit more, more consideration for inventors or researchers. And how do you think about that? Yeah, uh, yeah it's complicated. <laughs> Basically, I agree because uh, you know patent right, patent right be, should belong to uh, should be belong to the company. I think I think that's reasonable because uh, you know initially Japan uh, still present. Uh, still currently, Japanese patent law is totally different from other countries. In in, in Japan, Japanese patent law said if even if employee invent something at the company, patent right belong to an uh, inventor, not to the company. And the company can get only, you know, employee, employee says, oh, I agree to give the patent right to the company. In that case, company belong to, uh, patent right belong to the company. So, you know, so if you don't sign anything, patent right belong to the inventor, employee. So in my case, no agreement. So both sides agree. So in my case, no agreement. So the, I expect the patent right belong to me, but uh, totally. So that is the Japanese patent right. It's totally different. And but recently, Jap you know, Japanese government tried to change the, this regulation, same as the United States, all the patents are automatically belong to the company. So, but I think that is very reasonable because uh, also I work for the venture company here. If you start the venture company, patent should belong to the company, not the employee. It's very complex, you know. But in Japan, biggest problem is that here, you know, United States mostly uh, important is the startup company. If you go to Silicon Valley, a lot of startup companies like uh, Apple and the startup company is most important here. Everybody can start uh, do the startup. But uh, in Japan, no way, nobody can start uh, do the startup because no venture capitalist, zero, almost zero. So salary man cannot do the start a uh, startup. Company. That's the biggest problem in Japan. So I think the most important thing is Japan has to change the system. Everybody can do the startup company, you know, you know. But in that case, uh, you. We ha uh, Japanese government changed all kinds of regulation and uh, they have to find a good bench here. So it, it will take a long time. You know. Thank you. Oh. Congratulations. Uh, could you please tell us in Japanese how you feel about uh, winning the prize and tell us also what this means for Japan? Oh, Japan, uh, I think. Uh, for Japanese people, it's a uh, great rule because uh, for physics, three uh, Nobel laureate this time. But uh, yeah, it's great for for invention. But uh, but the problem is uh, even if the, the invention happened in Japan, uh, I think uh, Japanese company has a problem of the uh, globalization. Even if the invention great, they will lose the market. Like uh, you know, semiconductor technology, cell phone technology, also the solar cell. In Japanese company, very good product initially, but now. All Japan company almost collapsed. They, they, they failed the globalization. But they really the same thing, you know, even the invention happened in Japan. They, I think, now losing all of the market share already because the Japanese company are very bad for the globalization. <laughs>